Hi, welcome to the Lighthouse of Awesome. I am Michael. Today I am starting reviewing The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Netflix show based on the Archie Sabrina magazine for which there has also been Sabrina the Teenage Witch in the 90s and a cartoon about. A couple things that I'm going to say as a postulate beforehand. Uh, first, I'm only going to give spoilers up to the episode that I'm on, so if anybody's watching along, they don't get any surprises. That means I will probably circle back at some point to the more interesting points. Secondly, I'm going to be focusing on spells and lore. I will go over plot points, um, but more of the um, supernatural and religious aspects of the show. There's different plot points going on in the school. Or her friends are getting picked on. She has a boyfriend, Harvey, which means she's starting with Harvey. This is a much darker show than past Sabrina's. Very, like, you have to turn off all, all the lights and turn the brightness all the way up on your TV to uh, see the picture. So it's a very, very dark show. It still kind of gives some 50s elements to it. It's got older music, older cars, more like 80s style. Uh, the Paramount studio where they go watch the movie is um, different. They're watching Night of the Living Dead, which is a classic zombie movie in black and white. Quick points of interest of the supernatural um, that we'll return to later. Her teacher um, is driving home after the movie spins out in her car because something distracts her from the side of the road and a woman gets into the teacher's car so miss wardwell and miss wardwell drives this lady back to her uh, cat cottage and they go through um a stretch of road which is kind of sco spooky um growing up we always used to call these stretches of road Endor. Like driving through Endor you just have like a tunnel of trees and all that like the sky disappears and it's oh it's absolutely great. So Miss Wardwell takes this lady back. Lady freaks out, goes all full demon and kills Miss Wardwell and takes her body. And the spell that this creature uses to take over Miss Wardwell is Dominus Pater Respis Adme Ergo Sira Facem. Lord is evident, look at me, I create face, or something along those lines. The big plot point of the story is that Saprina is going to her dark bath baptism, which is basically put out like Catholic confirmation. Sabrina's aunts want you to want her to go to this dark baptism, Catholics. In school, your parents want you to get confirmed. You have to go to all these classes, learn all these things. And then they drill into you that it's your choice, it's your choice, it's your choice, it's your choice, but it's really not your choice. It's something that you have to do. And something that I kind of learned later is about free will and accord. I do this on my own free will and accord. It doesn't mean that you're not coerced into doing something. It means that someone isn't, doesn't directly have a gun to your head in that circumstance. So, um, it's, so basically you will not immediately die. So there was an older version of free speech where you can say anything you want, but we will kill you afterwards. And at some point in American history, we reached back and said like, well, if you can say anything you're, you want and we'll kill you afterwards, that not, isn't really the case. Um, so, own free will and accord means that you're basically not going to die instantly. While someone going for confirmation or Sabrina going towards for her dark baptism is coerced on many levels, it's still her own free will and accord despite the coercion because it's not, there's instant death is not threatened. So what I found interesting, going back to um, 
Ambrose, or I'm not sure if Ambrose is Sabrina's cousin, uh, much older, um, who is um, basically bound to the house for doing something, uh, which is a lot like Salem was in the Sabrina's Teenage Witch. So I see a lot of the original Salem in Ambrose, the sarcasm, the quit, quit, the, you know, the jokes, the um, deep insights. Salem the cat does show up. Sabrina summons him. Um, not him in particular, but um, she does a summon familiar herself. Um, so she rings a bell for a couple times and says, Spirits of the forest, I pronounce my intentions to thee. Come forth and seek me, and equal we will be. Rings the bell again. Not master and servant, but familiar to familiar, to share our knowledge, our spirits, and our traits. Rings the bell again, and then she kind of pauses for a second and says, and now, spirits, we will wait. At which point, three girls from the school she's about to go to show up and put a hex on her. And this hex, um, I spent hours figuring out exactly what it was it is crazy complicated and the source i found from 1970 which seems to be exactly what they say in the the show uh, seems to be nerfed of some level so it's not the the full force spell that is actually cast Vos omnes ministry o de es destruction et sertore discorde et qui lepita apra et tractis bus quad et nosh. Vos conjures adic nos condro et dipicur quad ministre et consecre esta ingmengad et odid via mir alv. So that's kind of crazy. Um, I spent a lot of time on Google Translate to see what was going on and kind of a poor translation at best is all you officials, which is in Latin, vos almost ministry. And then I will thank God, which is Odea in Hebrew, for the destruction of of the Serator Discord, those that please you with their treatment, this is going to hurt. We conjure out of us and into you the strange channels of the sea. Um, strange being a translation from the word in Welsh. A very weird curse. So looking online, I found something called the Sending of the Eight thought originally was part of the spell. Started going through the sending of the eight, going through the details, and realized that that was not the case at all. It's actually a the, an operation of grand bewitchment. There's two parts. There's a prep part and there's a cast part. And the, the words that the three students use are from the end of the cast part. So there's different, so the prep part, you basically make a clay model. And it's working with the, the god Senornos, which is basically a um, bull-like horned god from Scotland, Celtic god. So Tuesday night before the new moon, uh, closer to the winter solstice ideally, uh, you tape a triangle around your altar pointing north. You line up the altar's triangle to match the to match a larger triangle, which is around the altar. You place your molding material, either wax or clay, inside that inner triangle, um, and you wreathe it with this Serenos paraphernalia, which is like little horns and um, fir tree clippings. It's basically like a wreath with in it and so out then there's like you need like a full decked out 
which is sent here. You need a thurible, um, which is like one of those dangling things. They swing the incense in, in uh, Catholic churches or high, basically high churches. And then you need a chalice of bitter wine, rue, or myrrh. Um, so not, nothing that like tasty or good. Or the wand, the corn, the, the athane, just regular witch's tools. An unlit candle of bewitchment, which is a red candle. Um, lamps of art, I'm not sure what those are. Um, a file of some bat oil, which is super complicated to make. Uh, you basically have to click stuff during the um, waxing moon, wild paisley rue, poplar leaves, or balm of gilead, single foil, and saffron. So, like, saffron's, like, super expensive. And so, basically, you crush these herbs up in the, uh, in the waxing moon, so while, while it's between new new and full. You soak them in vegetable oil, alcohol to be added to oil later. A square of Mars, um, which is like a consecrated square. It has keywords on it. Um, so I've read a couple of things that you can write the keywords on the back of it of what you use so you remember it. Um, objects link, so things that connect to your person that you're Connecting to uh, baneful herbs and graveyard dust. This is the stuff that's going to get mixed in with that clay or that wax. Daggeties or exercise needles of art. So basically just things to stick the doll in. So it's very, very voodoo-esque. And you're declaring that this doll that you're making is this person every step of the way. And it's, it's very like... Man, like, how can you be so obsessed with a person to do this? Because you have to be like, in the name of Saranos, the horn one, creature of earth, or wax, depending on what you use, I name thee, and then you say the person's name. Thou art, and then you say the person's name. And you just do this over and over and over and over again. You have to, like, visualize horrible things happening to this person in your mind. Yeah, and so that brings you to, like, the end of part one. And so for part two, we basically kind of start all over. We, we got a little red an candle and we uh, anoint it with Sabbath, that, that oil that we had from part one. Again, we're like focusing our fury on this person for like whatever messed up reason. The spell even says specify yourself, wallow in the fantasy evoked. Like just enjoy the agony and it's like do this a specified number of times 81 is a good number but a lot of people think more holy crap <laughs> like wow that's that's intense you cross your arms and it's not my hand which does this deed but the whole great horned one and and then you feel the horned god standing behind you and you like literally let it take your left hand and start to do these rituals and then you start calling out um, these words um Arator, Lipidor, Omnitor, Samnitor, Subfigitor, Ictor, Signar, Sedator, Combustor, Prognator, Ductor, Seductor, Comastar, Unenter. And so like those are words like farmer, stone, artist, rust, boast, fighter, guide, aside. We get to the part of Vos Omnis Minister Ode es Destructions, Eceritor, Discord, Equi Libitar, Opera, Fatis, Et Trisbus, Con Et Nosia, and all the way to the end. And then the candle has to burn all the way down. So in the show, the girls just circle around. Sabrina to tech, to cast the cell spell and uh, Yeah, if anybody does that to you just like run into them boom Susie who's was bullied uh, Sabrina goes to the principal and says hey, this is the problem the principal says all right Give me their names and Sabrina says I don't have their names and the Principal's like well, you can tell Susie to go elsewhere like just like leave the school really which is just a pretty 
intense thing for a principal to say. Um, probably not something a principal would say. That suggestion results in a fantastic spell between Ambrose and Sabrina. Um, so, uh, one of Sabrina's aunts keeps spiders as uh, familiars. And so, they borrow the familiars and put them in a cage and put a picture of the principal in and uh, do a, a fun little children's rhyme over everything. Oh spider, oh spider, pray why do you spin your pretty white web so fine and so thin? To catch fat flies and make them into pies. Oh spider, oh spider, pray do you not see a, here comes a big buzzing blundering bee. He'll spoil your fine net while you fume in your fret, but no n mercy you'll fall grant and no mercy you'll get. The spiders infest the principal's house. The principal gets it. Um, this is appears. Then we're on the search for the malum malice. So um, basically the fruit of knowledge from the tree of evil, good and evil. Sabrina takes off with Harvey after school, goes to the apple orchard, which is clearly a confused apple orchard because at the end of October, there's still leaves on the trees, there's flowers on the trees, somehow. <laughs> apple orchard in the spring and attached uh, apples to <laughs> the trees uh, in the movie, which is interesting. So instead of going into the maze with Harvey, why not she goes alone? Miss Wardwell character, whatever she is, has, um, has a raven friend. Um, Stokes, who is a familiar of Miss Wardwell, who is not Miss Wardwell, but is just apparently using Miss Wardwell's body right now. Stokes is tracking Sabrina through the maze, and Sabrina gets to a fork in the road. There's a scarecrow there, and she, um, she uses a, the hickory pickery, hickory pickery, hickory pickery. Where should this girl go? Hickory pickery, hickory pickery. She'll go east, she'll go west, she'll go to the crow's nest. Hickory pickery, hickory pickery, hickory pickery. It's the way to decide which way to go. She goes left. Crow follows her. And a scarecrow comes out and grabs her. And it shows Miss Wardwell kind of dancing with the scarecrow or Salem pounds <laughs> the scarecrow and basically just destroys it. Sabrina's familiar, the cat. Sabrina gets out of the maze, finds the old apple tree, which is super weirdly shaped apple tree. It's like super tall, like ridiculous. Like I've seen ton I've seen hundred year old apple trees that are not this tall. Whatever, there's an apple. She goes to pick the apple. Salem kind of hisses or whatever. She picks the apple anyway. Bites the apple. Apple goes to worms. Ambrose had said, make sure the apple doesn't go to worms. And, which is being hung by a tree and a horned monster. Basically, a minotaur coming out of the out of the apple tree and chasing her down. She drops the apple. Uh, she spits out. Eventually, spits it out, uh, and Harvey shows up right afterwards. So, certainly an interesting episode. And uh, we'll review more, more later.